out here. My name's Rhapsody, and I got some Fallout New Vegas for you. I recently made button on Twitch, and so to celebrate, I'll be streaming the whole of the aforementioned Fallout New Vegas. I'll be using the Viva New Vegas mod pack for a vanilla plus experience, which restores cut content, increases stability, improves graphical fidelity, and adds in some quality of life changes like spring. Come on down to the Twitch warehouses on Saturday, June 20th at 3 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Central, or 6 p.m. Eastern for the start of the run and return at the same time every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday thereafter for more! Stream schedule in your own time zone as well as a link to the Twitch channel in the description below. My name is Rhapsody and welcome to, at long last, Covenant 25. In Monster Train, we're going to be going for a primary and allied clan, both randomized. Let's see what we can get done here. All right, give me Stygian. Hello, Stygian. Uh, the strength of our units is going to be tempered by Seraph the Temperant. Also got Energy Siphon, Packed Morsels, two copies of each, and Guardian Amulet. Uh, I will also quickly read down that list of all of the different levels of difficulty that have been added since the base game. Enemies are stronger. Add additional random cards to your starting deck. Add dead weight to your starting deck. Major battles now have additional enemies. Minor bosses have additional damage. Minor battles have additional enemies. Add a copy of the primary clan starter card to the starting deck. Some basic enemies have additional damage. Add a copy of the allied clan starter card to your starting deck. Your pie takes 20 damage at the start of your run. Friendly units on the top floor enter with days. Merchant reroll costs are 20% higher. Major bosses have increased health. Add a copy of the primary clan starter card to your starting deck. Minor bosses have increased health. Add a copy of the allied clan starter card to your starting deck. Merchant purge costs 20% more. Add dead weight to your starting deck. Merchant goods cost 20% more. Some basic enemies have additional damage. Negative one capacity on a random floor. Major bosses have increased health. Minor bosses have increased health. Heavy enemies have increased health. Your pilot takes 20 more damage at the start of the run. And Seraph has a thousand extra health. It's one heck of a lot. Ooh. Extra two capacity on the middle floor? In a run where we could be going for incant triggers? That's a big old yes please right there. Hmm. I have concern that we're going to take a bunch of damage in the first fight unless we take conduit here. Stygian Banner's next to the Merchant of Magic. We might get a unit draft there. Stygian Banner's almost certainly going to be a incant trigger to go on the mid floor. Damage spells costing negative one is actually really good though. Okay. Specifically for the incant stacking, we're going to have a little bit of difficulty here. Uh, at the start of battle, enemies appear on each floor. So that costs us six health, six, no, nine health for the top line, and then four more, so 13. Costs us 13 if we set up on the bottom line. Obviously, minus any frozen lances, right? I can do that. If we end up losing right here, right now. Woo! <laughs> uh, that would suck. Hey, so we got the plus one capacity and negative one capacity on the same floor. Nice. Maybe I do set up on the top floor. Look at the packed morsels. Hmm. I mean, maybe I actually set up on the bottom floor now. Train steward front line, Teth is behind. Drop A and Tumbra, I guess. The train steward. Or I could chump block with something else. Actually, the same amount of health. Uh, it's no, no, it's the different amount of health, right? You give three, it did block five. Hmm. Frozen Lance almost certainly goes on the top line because it saves us three health. What if we did the same chump blocking plan, but we did it on the top floor? I like that, actually. One, two, and we'll chump block with something that doesn't give health. No, we actually want more damage on units. No, but we don't want this. It's fine. Chump block with that, and then... I mean, we save five more health with this instead of the three. Okay, the end tumbler goes in the front then. It's taken six damage this so far. I mean, 
we definitely just shade split, right? Rubble morsel. Not really what we were hoping for there. Pop that there. We'll put an energy siphon on the forged disciple to try and get it down in time. Unfortunately, we also don't manage to get the collector there. Go Train Steward and Tumbra, because that actually saps two attacks here, so I get to attack through. Where does the Rubble Morsel want to get eaten? I really worry about this against the boss. Because nothing we have is scaling. But Sweep actually wouldn't have been that much better here anyway, right? Sweep would actually be worse against the boss, because Tethys would deal less damage to them. Admittedly, the top line looks pretty bad. Also, that Disciple Foot Soldier is not going to be able to be killed without a sweep or something like that. We might actually already be dead here. Truth of the matter is we may be. Let's see what we can do, though. 21 dam damage taken so far. Block with that. Another block there. Guess it's just frozen lance, frozen lance. Okay, we jump with each of them, I think, is all we can really do there. Siphon, frozen lance, frozen lance. Yeah, see, the thing is, even with sweep, I don't think I would have done anything here. And even without taking the challenge, I think the Disciple Inquisitor was just going to go to the top. Hmm. Having that start, I don't know what much I could have done, to be entirely honest with you. Because specifically, if you don't get... Oh, my God. Same combo. Huh. We did re-random, right? Wow. Um, in particular, when you are playing with the... Tethys, and you don't get the Frostbite Tethys very early. Your early bosses are really hard if you don't also get damage spells. And we got no damage spells, and we also didn't get Frostbite Tethys, uh, which makes life real, real hard. We also didn't have any directed damage to be able to take out the backliners. We could have done that with a sweep, so we definitely could have saved health with a sweep, but we still would have died to the boss going to the top and then just bashing out the 40 that we had. Two offering tokens and a nice storm in the base deck is very promising, but again... Not very good for the upcoming elite, so we're going to hope for Frostbite there, probably. Split Anvil is incredibly good with these clans. But we have to take the Tethys with the Frostbite. So we'll take our Chill Wind and move on. Number of enemies enter with Spikes 3. We definitely can't take that. We extremely can't take that because then Tethys dies to the first wave of the enemies. So this is this is a no. We don't just lose HP to take that. We lose the run to take that. I mean, definitely. I mean, I can't chump block on that bottom floor anyway, so... Might as well do what I can where I can. Okay. Uh, I mean, honestly, just another train skewer there should be enough. Interesting. 
It's going to be a lot of Frostbite, so I'm okay with this still. It's just Ice Storm is on the bottom of the deck, and I'm thinking Offering Token to get it, possibly clear the Disciple Foot Soldier for the win. Okay, cool. We got him. Easy. Yeah, we just we just need the scaling damage at this point to take out even the lowest bosses, Crypt Builder, 100%. Crypt Builder is really good for triggering the split anvil. It's also going to be incredibly good for uh, playing with the offering token because that will still trigger the split anvil. Means that we don't need the conduit as much. I'm also going to take Space Prism here for more incant triggers on the same floor because with the split anvil and that offering token, we're going to be going for incant triggers definitely. Um, interestingly, I think we might go for an Umbra unit here because a lot of the Umbra units are tanks in the front line. But they're tanks in the front line when you have sh uh, when you have morsels in them, though. It's in the next area. Another Umbra unit? God, where's our Stygian? Our first Stygian unit is after Daedalus? Oh, come on. And then there's no more Stygian units. Literally, like, we get one Stygian unit draft. G game? Why? Why? All right. Well, crumbs. I guess Tethys is a backliner to a uh, to, to a to an Umbra floor. Then I don't like it, but if it has to be done, it has to be done. Is it Crucible Warden? Okay. It's going to be really annoying against Seraph the Chase, because Seraph the Chase is obviously going to be purging half of it off, but I am looking to transition out of the uh, Crucible Warden as quickly as I can here. I'm also going to put a Battle Stone on, because I'm not comfortable with the amount of health it has at the moment, due to the fact that I don't have as high a saturation of morsels in the deck as I would want for that to be more viable. Unit Drafts. I really want Unit Drafts. These Clergymen and Conduit Floors, even if they get to the top completely uh, uninterrupted, will only deal five. And Crucible Warden Tethys interrupt the first. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I, I need unit drafts to try and find some some Stygians. Do I set up on the bottom floor? No, because then the Crucible Warden just needlessly takes more damage than it needs to, right? We can just put it up on the top floor. Not like we're being attacked this turn. Nice! Got the collector down there. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's easy to figure out which way we're going to start there. Uh, should the train sewer go on the top floor in order to block a bunch of hits from the Crucible Warden? Or do I shade split? I think I shade split it twice here. Yeah. to give it some Divine Shield for later turns. Okay. Do I need to play anything else here? Not really. So they're gonna teleport straight to the top line, makes sense. Shade Splitter out. Unfortunately, the Steel Slate does have two spikes, so the Tethys is only hitting it a couple times here. Two times, literally. My Force. The Train Steward just dies if I play it on the bottom line. But it does mean I'm not drawing back into a Train Steward. No attack. No attack. No attack. Good. That could have been a lot worse. Could have been significantly worse for us. Another Crypt Builder. Making of a Morsel is not awful. Right now. 
It's just a, uh, an, an, it's obviously another morsel in the deck, but it's also a two cost card that makes one cost card zero, but it also makes, it gets made zero cost by the Crypt Builder. Okay, we found some over, uh, sorry, not over Gorge. <laughs> don't have enough concentration in the deck to do that, I don't think. I mean, but we could pivot to it. Could we? I mean, Siren of the Sea and Nameless Siren both solve damage problems, which is already solved by Tethys. Tethys and our spells in particular. So these don't actually solve new problems for us. And I guess if we are ever going to transition out of the Crucible Warden, we do want someone to put... See, my big worry is this is a deck that becomes very good here. And it dies here. <laughs> <laughs> Stand magic power on a ice storm is incredible. I'm going to reroll before I lower the cost of anything. Yep, hold over. It's so much damage. I needed that. Yes, the crypt builders or the offering token on holdover would be nice. Um, but I, I just need the damage right now, frankly. Alright, we'll upgrade one of those as well. So Concealed Cavern. Do we go for a Weathered Coolstone again for trying to heal back up? Because we can just use Offering Tokens to discard them as well. I'm into it. Did that in the last successful run. I, I think Daedalus kills us. I, I honestly think that's the case. But I think that if this gets past Daedalus, it has a really good opportunity to take off after there. Although, like, the Stygian banner's on the opposite side to the Merchant of Steel, which also still feels really bad, because I'm still looking for a Stygian tank for that floor. Okay. Use a little bit of a non-traditional setup here. Uh, the hell's from the Vengeful Pyre right now? Yeah. It's nice to finally get a Divine Shield up, but the Divine Shields are going down real fast and furious here, unfortunately. We'll take one damage. I think that's okay. Yeah, it's fine. Frozen Lance goes two times on the bottom line. Without Lifesteal, we're just not healing back up on this, this Crucible Warden ever. So I'm going to have to Shade Splitter Chump Block with the Shade Splitter. Then use the Ice Storm so that we don't die. Yeah, don't love this. God, am I using a... Train steward to block? Oh, I don't like any of that. Yeah, it just, it doesn't scale. This whole build just does not scale. Fast enough, at least. Right. There you go, 218. Overgorge, you can take, what, two hits on the top floor here? Give it another hit with a making of morsel as well as deal some damage. Or I just deal 55 with an ice storm right now. Oh, no, I can do both. It's fine. Honestly? We live? That might be good enough. 
Lacing Bolts is very good. Umbra Stone also looks pretty good for the Overgorger eventually. Blazing Bolts, just for the, the Split Anvil in particular, makes that decision. God! Stop! It's, is it none of these? It's, it's, it's still none of these. Uh, ah. Very mad that it's none of those. I think I take the draw here. We don't generate enough morsels to need capacity yet. If I don't get a Stygian tank, I lose. You can't do this to me! I checked so many! There's the incant seal, thanks! For all my incant units! It's a very, very big speculative pick to make right there, but kind of think I have to. Let me get rid of these perils of production there. Not very useful for us at all. Upgrade the champion. Yeah, damage spells cost negative one. I don't need that here. We'll go pure Tethys. I just lose to this, don't I? Definitely can't take the event there. Tell you that much for free. I hate that I just never get to play the Overgorger. Because I have to play the Ice Storm here. Getting getting the Overgorger as well as the Crucible one in the first hand is really rough. take that money. Sucks to get all of those Ventual Shards in the same hand, because you ideally want them split across. That is, split across a bunch of different hands. God, maybe the Overgorger isn't anything for us anymore. The longer we go, the more and more that feels like the case. Okay. It's fine, we can just discard one of them, play the other. There's our kill. Spell damage is still decent for us. Engine upgrade on a different floor. Amber forged? No. Is it engine upgrade? I think we always have a free floor to engine upgrade on. I think it has a little bit to offer for this build. God, I don't like the minion upgrades because I don't like my minions. We took this as a transitional unit, and then we could not find anything to transition out to. Like, all of the other options just performed what we can already do worse. So do I throw myself on the mercy of an event? The Blazing Bolts and the... Uh, yeah, the Blazing Bolts just itself, I guess, uh, wants to be cost decreased. So that it gets made zero cost by crit builders as well. I'm going to try and find a solution in Artifact and, and the Concealed Caverns. Because I just... I don't think upgrading this Crucible Warden and planning around using that. Or even upgrading the Overgorger. I don't think that wins. So I think we need to find something to help us win. And I think like Spike Driver could be that. Other things, I'm certain. 
who can see my plus one, plus 10 magic power. Oh, wait, plus 10 magic power to the second ice storm we just picked up. Remove consume cost plus one is actually like really good for something like a, uh, where are you? Uh, for, for engine builder if I really want a bunch of energy, but I don't. Stack nothing. Okay. Ooh, make the second ice storm much more powerful. Or do I make blazing bolts better? Because that's a lot of damage to the front line. And directed damage to the front line is important to us, but we already have the crit builders for that as well. And damage to the back line is already kind of handled with the ice storm. That we have on holdover. Okay. Okay. I'm sold. Uh, as for the rest of that, I think we're okay. Uh, Jack Strips is huge. Interesting. This is actually really interesting because we actually now have a bunch of Blights in the deck. So Abandoned Stave is plus one energy per turn for every two Blight cards in the deck. One, two, three, four. Five, six. So it's three extra energy every turn. It's just our deck is completely trash if we take that. Calcified Embers helps us set up a little bit better, but obviously we have to get through a fight. Again, this is a pick of this might make me die in the next fight, but without it, I'm pretty sure I definitely die in the final one. Multi-strike is really bad for us, isn't it? It is, but the thing is, all of these uh, sycophants die by going to floor two. So the overcharged tank is, what, uh, pumped by eight, six, six, eight, 14, 14, double strike. And as long as we're getting damage shields at any point, it's, it's, it's the only thing is it conceals dam uh, sorry, consumes damage shields twice as fast. This is another case of I don't think this deck wins unless we get an inordinate amount of value right now. That's so rude because the second floor is where we actually want to set up. Do we still do it? I think we do. Oh, to a random enemy? I could have sworn it was the front. Huh. Weird. Okay. Do I set up an Overgorge at top floor? It'd be Overgorge's Shade Splitter if I'm doing anything. Offering our way through a crypt builder to make that easy. We'll engine upgrade the bottom floor, Ventral Shard. Ice Storm here is the kill, saves us some damage shields as well. We all just, just let the Overgorger. I think it's too I think it's just way too late for the Overgorger. We just let the Overgorger die. We may end up removing it from the deck later as well. I think it's just way too late for that unit. We do give you the harvest triggers, but you still have 20 frostbite on you, and I need the damage shield still. See how much we can do. It's held over. We didn't get more damage shields on the Crucible Warden, so I'm feeling real nervous about that. 
You got one damage shield on you. This is worth two damage shields. Putting down two morsels is worth two damage shields as well. Sweet. One hit. Oh, but the thing is, it takes the enemy only two cycles of attacks to kill out this floor anyway. Right? One, two on the train steward. Three on the crucible warden. One, two, and then you're down to 18. One, two, three, four, and then one against Tethys, and Tethys is dead. So instead of putting the train steward there, I have to gamble on trying to get uh, morsels that also give us damage shield, but also give us something else. Because playing the train steward there is no different to the current setup. I mean, obviously, close and less on the bottom floor there. I mean, look, if we were ever going to get a hand, this is the one. Oh, okay. The first one's uh, not so much. But this is kind of the one we wanted. <sighs> Sadly, yeah, this is basically the best one this could do. Would we have had more damage shields if we didn't go for the multi-strike? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Would it have been that much more damage shield? Probably like four. So four, imagine four buys us an extra attack, right? That's another 60 as well as higher frostbite for the next couple turns. That might have just been enough to not take multi-strike there. But on top of that, you also have to think of, well, how do we win the Seraph fight with that deck? Because we weren't getting any more minions past that point. We were only getting spells and artifacts. So if the minions weren't going to be enough to get us there, because the Seraph was going to halve our charges of, uh, of the, divine, uh, sorry, the damage shield every single time it came to that floor... And it was also going to halve Frostbite on itself and friendlies every time it went to their floors. So I think we needed at that point to scale out because the Overgorger also, like we weren't just finding massive morsel support for that. The Overgorger might have uh, found its support if we picked up like Gem Trove or something like that. Gem Trove, Grovel, uh, if there were packed morsels early enough uh, after the pickup of the Overgorger, maybe, right? It's just really unfortunate that we found a, a build that would have worked very well with incant builds and no cards that worked well with gorge builds, but we only found gorge units and we found no incant unit tanks. The obviously double incant on Siren of the Sea is nice. It's not awful. That with a bunch of upgrades is how you can possibly have a Siren of the Sea be your tank. Definitely. Definitely. I still think it would have died there. A hundred percent. Because it just doesn't grow fast enough gaining two every turn, right? We would have needed something like a, a, a Stygian Guard. Or Guard of the Unnamed, the Incant Gang 3 armor in particular would have been really good. Uh, we also could have settled to take a Titan Sentry, and that's the Frostbite. It doesn't have an Incant trigger on itself, but it does have a large health pool by base, and we would have the ability to add to its health pool pretty significantly, and it would also contribute very well to the Frostbite stacking as far as the boss goes, so it actually would even be much, much better against the boss waves. Uh, and... It wouldn't be as uh, as poorly affected by the Seraph at the end of the run as well. Let's have a look at the run summary. As risky as the final takes were, I still I still think I stand by them. I think 
those had to be rolled. Like, obviously, Calcified Ember, taking the extra battle here, things like that. Um, those had to be rolled to try and win later. Again, I think the only scaling that we had access to pass, effectively past the Clip Tormentor's floor uh, was going to be through artifacts uh, as well as through spells. So getting the extra cost in order to handle those a little bit better is what we kind of needed to go towards. <sighs> that's really unfortunate because that's like a very, very good clan combination. We also had really, really good artifacts. It's just the run really didn't want to give us much at all. I've also been trying to broaden out like what I will accept as well because I know that like, you know, if, if you play STS, right, and you're playing silent and you have a run that doesn't see many poison cards, but you're trying to build poison and you rigidly try and build poison, at some point, you'll be like, oh, the game's just not offering me the right things. It's all the game's fault uh, because you didn't get any poison. But you should have been more flexible. You should have gone for a possible discard deck or a defense deck or a, a shiv deck or you know some other form, right? The problem is I kept looking for things like that, but I kept finding things that already fulfilled use cases we'd already fulfilled worse than we'd already fulfilled them and could not find anything to support what we actually needed, which was a frontline unit. That's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. But for the moment, it'll help us build up the, uh, the suspense for the actual, eventual, Covenant 25 win. For the moment, though, my name is Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Monster Train. There's a link in the description down below with all my content on this game, past, present, and future. And hopefully we'll see you next time.